So, as the Mapadia said, my name is, uh, good evening to everybody first. Uh, my name is uh, Podgers Kampiotis, and I'm uh, the Vice President and CEO of SAS Technology, uh, a company in Mapadia's George in Greece. Uh, I'm also an uh, aeronautical engineer, and I'm a new person. I retired from the Germanic Air Force, uh, where I served for 31 years. Uh, the, the topic of my presentation is to talk to you about the creation of a successful and team company that uh, designs and manufactures advanced systems in Greece. And this was not, uh, this was not uh, a very small challenge, if I might add. So, uh, the scope of the presentation, as I know, among you, there are a lot of uh, new scientists that are about to enter the professional battleground. And hopefully, uh, we will be able to share some ideas and some views that uh, will inform and hopefully inspire all of you. As uh, me personally, uh, I am, uh, let's say, when I look back to my uh, career, I see longer road than what statistically I would expect to be in front. So, we uh, really older people have the privilege to, to lecture the, the younger generations. Uh, and uh, of course, I will trade in a bit with uh, the position, my position here with your position there. But uh, for the moment, I will try to share with you some of my views about the roadmap to success before I, uh, I enter the main part of my presentation that is about uh, the actual company, the SAS technology, and how we arrive where we are today. So, uh, let's start with the uh, don't be alarmed, I'm not going to talk about the uh, heavy physics here, I'm not the right guy to do that. But I just wanted to, to use some analogy that uh, will stay probably in your mind and you will create some, uh, some thoughts. So, uh, I think that the, the professional life mode of everybody of us uh, resembles a lot of the quantum world. And uh, you're a young scientist, of course, you have heard, you have heard about uh, the, the quantum technology, and I will use in my analogy here some of the terminology like the quantum uncertainty, the superposition, which is the ability of the nanoparticles to be able to be in more than one place uh, at the same time, and of course, if no one is looking, and of course, the wave function collapse, which is the, the property that when you measure some quantum uh, uh, process, uh, it actually collapses to one reality. And I will use a little bit uh, the famous uh, Schrodinger's cat thought uh, experiment, which was uh, made back in the 30s when the whole uh, new uh, science was being discovered. And uh, they, they wanted to make some uh, thought some, some experiment about how the quantum world properties could uh, reflect to the real world. So Mr. Schrodinger said that uh, what if we put a cat in, uh, in a box? And we close that box and we link a, a bottle of poison that could kill the cat with the subatomic process. And uh, as we know, the subatomic process it can or cannot happen, which means it is uh, it has this uncertainty. We can have all the states at one at one time. So uh, supposedly, at the same time, the cat would have would be also in superposition, which means it would be dead and alive together until you open the box and you see the cat in, in a final collapse state, which could be either one of those, uh, dead or alive. So, uh, going back now to, to the career path, to, to the roadmap to main goal that you might, uh, may, might place. Uh, let's say that today you are in a position that you have achieved one major goal, which is to approach or to be near the end of uh, your, your, your studies and your academic uh, progress. And uh, you look back, when you look back, everything seems like a straight line, like right? pretty much this uh, endless road here, which is somewhere in the United States. And uh, everything seems determined and settled, uh, as we say in the quantum, uh, collapsed, collapsed in one reality. Everything is in a straight line. The only anomaly, if we can say, about this uh, straight line uh, would be that uh, you, did, you did not arrive here with what you are your, your goal. With a constant speed, but rather you were following segments that were either faster or slower, sometimes so slow that uh, it was unbearable. Uh, but in any case, uh, when you look back, you see this. I do, I hope everybody shares the same view, that it is like a straight line. 
But when you turn 100 degrees the other way, uh, the, the whole idea changes completely. And uh, you see in front of you uncertainty. You see many different roads that you can take. You see a lot of crossroads, and crossroads has this uh, funny property that you have to make decisions which, which road you have to take. And uh, where you base your, your decision on is something like this uh, funny road sign here that uh, gives you a lot of information and not uh, really useful information. And of course, in this process, uh, you feel all the feelings that are shown in the right side of the, of the slide. You're feeling unsure, you're feeling frustrated, you're feeling doubtful, you're feeling lost, unclear, uncertain, confused, all those things come to your mind every time you have to make a, a decision. And they are more prevailing when uh, the decision is very significant for you. Uh, if we can summarize what we talked about, you know, your, your professional life, but your life essentially uh, is divided into two parts. One part is the past, as we said, determined and settled. The other part is the present, which is a very, very narrow segment, narrower than what we think really. And uh, the next, uh, the unsure uh, future has a lot of possibilities, a lot of different choices in that future. And uh, really, uh, the, the points of decisions are much closer than, than even this graph can describe. And of course, all of these things uh, are uh, related to a single vector that has one only direction, and this is time. And now we go to the other question, is uh, how we go from the present state that we are to any goal that we, we, we put in front of us. And if you take just the geometric approach, you would say that uh, the shortest uh, distance between uh, two points is uh, practically the straight line, like the gray hour here, rather than the endeavoring red line here that goes all around the place. But uh, the question here, is it true for, uh, for, for reality and for our career path and our goals? Now, in this particular graph that is essentially the same, but it only has some more information, I think doubt is created because, as you see, we put another one additional factor here. We put the, the speed, uh, the velocity uh, as a new term. And uh, you see here that now we can say that we, we're not sure which path is, is quicker, the, the extremely slow straight line or the fast enough uh, uh, segmented line, the, the, the purple line. And of course, generally, I would say that the fastest route is the purple line in this particular case, and I will explain why. The way is that it takes a lot of thought and effort and energy to try to make the absolutely correct decision. And to uh, tell you the truth, you don't even have in advance all the actual facts that will enable you to make the perfect, to make the decision that will keep you in the perfect path. And you know, in an essence, it's all about time. It's not only the, the closest route, it's not how, how, how fast you're going to go to your, to your, to your desired goal. Uh, so, uh, in the decision making process, if you attempt uh, perfection, you are going to be slow. And slow is not good when we are pursuing our targets. So, now what is the best alternative to that? The best alternative you have is that. You don't have, you should not waste your time trying to, to get the perfect decision every time you have to make a decision from your career to pursue your goals. But it's, it's best to gather the best information available and move towards the goal, making corrections where needed. This is the actual reality. So now, going back to the, to the basic uh, presentation, which is the case study, let's say, of the SaaS technology. Uh, and I said earlier that we feel we are successful. And why are we successful? Because in the short uh, period of time that we are uh, active as a, as a corporate uh, as a corporation, uh, we have managed a lot of uh, things that we are proud of. But uh, the, the pinnacle of that is that uh, we as a company, in this short period of time, we have managed to manufacture the first weaponized normal air system in Greece. And this is something that we take as a, as a small medal, let's say. Such an African system, a small glimpse about our facilities here and who we are. Such an African systems is a Greek company, member of Street World Group. 
a group that was established in 2004 and has subsidiaries that range from shipping, trading, field banking, real estate, and innovative technology. SAS was established in 2020 and derived from a technological research project team with research and prototyping experience on a month system since 2015. So we're not as new as the company uh, age shows. Uh, now we go to our uh, inspiration. Uh, every, everybody that is uh, in, the, in the business have to have inspiration, I'm sure. And we find our inspiration from the same of activities that uh, was saying, giving me a place to stand and a little long enough and I will move and I can go to the earth. He wanted essentially to prove and to, to overstate, if possible, the, the power of the levers that he had discovered. And he was saying that if he has a pivot in, in the right place and the lever and, and the, the suitable lever, he will move the huge uh, weight of the whole earth. And in the same spirit, we feel that uh, we can achieve everything as long as we put our minds to that and we put our efforts. Uh, the presentation now will continue with some. Uh, uh, I will give you an overview of what is, is coming. Then we will talk about the corporate milestones from the idea to the realization of our company. I will take you talking about the initial effort and the technical vision and the proof of concept prototypes that we made even before we made the SAS technology. I will talk to you about the corporate milestone of the uh, SAS creation, which is essentially the merging of a technical. Uh, Vision with a data and an entrepreneurial one. Uh, we'll talk about the business size that we have, which was no other than exploitation of the growth dynamic of the advanced systems. Uh, we will talk about the collaborations that we need our partners and why. And we'll talk about our team and our products, of course. Starting with the corporate milestones now, uh, it goes back to 2014, where the idea was formed. And uh, it was about the momentum of the AMAD system technology that was recognized at the time, and uh, along with the business opportunity that uh, this presented for us. So, uh, in 2015, a team of engineers under my uh, supervision, uh, with all the necessary skills and experience, agreed to pursue commonly a project to design a MALE US. MALE is an acronym, somebody, some people say male. Uh, I, I like to use that. The, the pronunciation value, not to confuse it with the uh, gender. Uh, so it is a uh, medium to long endurance aircraft. And when we say these aircraft, they're not the regular RC aircraft that we know, they are, they are rather large ones. And uh, in 2016, uh, the proof of concept uh, came about, uh, the MALE prototype uh, is built. And it was flight tested successfully. And following that, the team uh, proceeded to to build some other optimized variants. In 2020, uh, as I said, uh, SAS was realized, uh, saying again that the technical and the entrepreneurial vision were combined uh, to, to make SES uh, technology a reality. Now, the early steps. Uh, the early steps uh, were to design and build several versions of this Mali US I'm talking about. With the intention to gain knowledge, to better understand the relevant technology and attack the investors interest. At the time, it was uh, mostly uh, an applied uh, engineering uh, project. It was not; uh, it didn't have anything to do with the corporate entity. And uh, in this effort, uh, at that time, we built uh, three prototypes: one uh, single engine, one twin engine, as you see in the pictures, and the one with high wind. Uh, and in all this effort, we accumulated the knowledge and experience and uh, uh, taking advantage of this experience, we built uh, in the CAD environment a completely composite design, which is uh, this one down here at the bottom, uh, that uh, we even uh, went all the way to test it in computer environment, in uh, computer fluid dynamics, and it proved, it proved a very, very capable and efficient uh, platform. Going forward, as I said, 2020 uh, SAS technology uh, corporation becomes uh, a reality as a member of uh, Spirit World Group. Spirit World Group is a very dynamic group uh, with uh, many different aspects, as I talked to you earlier, and the SAS technology is proud to be a part of it. 
Yes. SA technology was founded with a great vision. Uh, we, we don't feel short, uh, we don't fall short on, on, on our vision. We wanted, we have that vision, we still have the ambition, and we, we, we feel we are on the right path to become a leader in the US technology of all types in Greece and the greater region. And when we say all types, most of the people, when we talk to them about drones, they feel that uh, they, they know only the small quadcopters that are flying around all day, and we see them all day. But uh, it's not only the small quadcopters, it's uh, many multi-copters, many types of multi-copters of various capabilities. It is, of course, a fixed wing aircraft, it is the helicopters, the, the vehicles, uh, the unmanned the boats and ships, the submerged vehicles, and of course the land rovers. Uh, we have applications for everything uh, of the ones that I talked about, but uh, inevitably the most fascinating is the aerial vehicles, and uh, we we put uh, a lot of effort, more of our, our effort on those. Now the business initiative. The business initiative was to create a company that uh, will develop locally all the aspects of the MAN systems, taking advantage of this emerging technology with the cataclysmic development dynamics and the ever expanding field of applications. And as you see in this particular slide here, we have gathered only the most representative uh, application use cases for drones. And uh, my, uh, our experience says that uh, every time we give somebody a tool like a, like a drone, uh, he will find a new way to use it. So the, the possibilities are really endless, uh, limitless. And uh, uh, trust me when I say from experience that uh, soon enough, not, not very far in the future, uh, every one of, of us uh, might be flying around with our clothes and uh, using it for transportation. In order to, to be able to achieve what we have, we have achieved up to now, we had, because we had the, in the beginning uh, the mindset to be able to build our own designs from scratch, we had to develop a lot of capabilities in house. Uh, it's not the, the common rule for everybody. Some uh, choose to reduce subcontractors for different things. We felt that we need to, to have all the basic uh, uh, specialties uh, under one roof. So we have our own aerodynamic design, we have our own structural design, electronic system design, software engineering, CAD design, uh, systems integration, flight controllers programming and uh, integration, uh, the, life, the, the, the line of communication between the drone and, uh, and, the, and the pilot, which is the radio means. So we use a lot of value in manufacturing, this new technique that is very, very, very important for us now. Uh, we make our own composites, and of course, we have our own machine shop inside uh, in house. So, all of these things allowed us to move forward and develop a specific capability to be able to do rapid prototyping and be able to answer quickly to any uh, requirements that are thrown to us by our customers. And believe me, they are not uh, limited, they are not very few, they are a lot. So, in that spirit, in the two years of our corporate existence, we have made already many, many different models of UAVs that are already in production and in the market. And uh, I will start with the Embusa UAV series, which is here on the, on the left. And uh, this comprises uh, from a uh, quadcopter, a uh, hexacopter. The uh, quadcopter is 6 kilograms maximum takeoff weight. The uh, hexacopter is 10 kilograms maximum takeoff weight. This hexacopter has also a variant for tactical use, which is already right now in use for the special forces and special forces, and it's also uh, weaponized. Um, we have also the extended payload platform, which is an interesting platform because it's very suitable for scientific research because it has a lot of real estate, let's say, in its body, it has a, it has a white body that allows the installation of a lot of uh, equipment on it. Uh, following the Musha series, I will talk about the Saris UAV series, which is uh, our flagship, it's our big UAV. It is a UAV that uh, has a maximum takeoff weight more than 60 kilograms. It's a big UAV, it's an airplane. And uh, we have a lot of variants over here. You saw only three of the variants, but there are two, at least five variants of that. Uh, even for civil, there are for civil applications, but also for military applications. We also make uh, custom on demand designs like the Maritime Surveillance UAV you see here. 
just because we are so agile in terms of uh, listening to requirements and asking to do specific products for that. In order now to be able to uh, to exploit more of the capabilities of our drones, we decided to build our own line of uh, ground stations, and we see here the portable ground stations uh, starting from one screen, three screens, or whatever any customer might require. And having this ability, we are able to put this hardware also inside the van and create a UAV mobile uh, center. I want to mention also the USB before this is a project that we have been working on, and uh, we have uh, gone up to a small scale prototype for now. And uh, this is something that is intended mainly for defense application as a mesh code share, a mesh code support, let's say, uh, for, for larger uh, naval units. Last but not least, I left uh, the, the Panoptis uh, Ambitone system. This is a system that we are working with uh, CERN or EKTA, or some, or some, uh, some people from you might know it, which is a very capable uh, state owned uh, uh, lab uh, that uh, has many, many capabilities. They have surprised us very much with their abilities. And uh, we, as a, a manufacturer of drones, we have the advantage when we talk about the uh, uh, drone system. Uh, knowing drones, we know the, the vulnerabilities of drones. So, uh, this is a useful information to put uh, as an input to the design of an drone system. And on the other hand, uh, being on the drone design also, we recognize uh, the capabilities of the drone system and we try to make our drones more resilient uh, to the common anti-drone systems. So, uh, as you understand, this is an, an ever-ending race that uh, has uh, measures, uh, countermeasures and counter measures. And uh, the successful uh, the successful companies in the market are the ones that are able to develop this, uh, this sequence faster. Some uh, information about the accreditations, uh, if I may say, so the court uh, for, for, for SAS. Uh, we are certified uh, with three ISOs ISO 9001, I'll give everybody familiar with that. Uh, ISO 14001, which is the environmental uh, management system, and uh, ISO 27001, which is the information security management uh, system. Uh, we are also registered to ICAO as, a, as an armed system manufacturer. We are registered to the Civil Aviation Authority. We are an approved supplier for NSPA, which is the procurement agency for NATO. And uh, this happened also, of course, through our general directorate for defense and investments and armaments, or DAE, as many of you might know it in Greek. EASA is a big part of our. Uh, our structure because, uh, as you know, drone is expanding fast as a market and as capabilities, and it has, is, in, is having a constant, a constant eye to the developments and its issue constantly new regulations. And uh, the, the environment of the regulatory environment is, is, is very, very, uh, is developing very much at the time. So we have to have a special. Uh, uh, let's say a uh, department in our company that uh, deals with the other regulations, monitors all the changes, gives input where we can uh, to, to the agency, and uh, of course uh, makes our products compliant to the ever changing regulations. About the partnerships now, uh, SAS, since its founding, employed a very extroverted strategy, actively pursuing partnerships with national and uh, Institutional bodies and the relevant subject innovative companies locally and abroad. And let me uh, bring some examples. We are uh, partners with the Hellenic Defense Systems, which is a state owned company that deals with uh, munitions. Uh, we have uh, cooperation with HAI. Uh, Sunlight is another interesting company that is uh, privately owned, that is uh, dealing with the batteries, and batteries uh, is a very big. Uh, uh, we have great interest in batteries and technology of those because this is essentially the only unit uh, the drones have batteries. We are working, we have a partnership with uh, the, the, the labs of uh, DAE, the National Defense Company, 
Uh, of course, uh, I will mention also the American College of Greece and the other Greek companies. We, we have, we want to, to have an increased uh, footprint of uh, Greek technology in our products. And we try uh, as hard as we can for that. But we also look abroad and we have identified specific uh, international companies that uh, have technologies that uh, help us uh, be better and technologically more uh, robust in our, in our products. Our leading team, uh, I would like to, to say about uh, my, uh, uh, Mr. Michael Spilakos, who is the president and CEO of uh, SAE Technology, but also owner and subholder of the Spiritball Group. Uh, I won't say anything about me. And uh, I want to inform you that uh, SAE Technology employs there around 20 engineers, technicians, in, and technicians in various specialties. This is a small uh, video that uh, will show you some of our facilities here, and some of our products, just to, to get an idea of uh, what we do. This is the Angus helicopter, the hexacopter. This is the Sarisa prototype. This is a third version of our facilities. I will display with uh, the big aircraft that we made uh, back at the time. Here is it, fly, it is flying. This is a practical take of uh, Ripple aircraft. This is a ground station. This is our design lab here. I will go forward with uh, giving you some more information about our flagship uh, uh, US, the US SARI side and its main variants. Here you see five of the variants, and I say they're not limited because there are many, many different uh, configurations that we do. Uh, this is again the, the one that we built for the fire service. Uh, these two are uh, Weaponized with uh, various types of uh, rocket propelled grenades. Uh, this one is uh, with a launcher for uh, 75 rockets. And this one is a light bomber that uses uh, hand grenades as, uh, as bombs. Here you see again uh, the, the fire department concept. Uh, it's called the fire size size 1C, and the resistance for cargo. And uh, it has been produced by uh, uh, it, has, it has been procured already by the fire service to be used to deliver supplies to firefighters during operations, especially when uh, they are fighting wildfires. But uh, the same version, the, the cargo version, is also uh, right now on the trials uh, with the Hellenic Army uh, Special Forces to be used uh, to resupply army units. Here you see uh, the cargo. I will progress a little bit so we save some time. Here is the best part of our, of our job going out to the field and testing the new systems. As you see, it's a, a very agile uh, multi-copter, regardless of the fact that it's uh, heavy enough and big enough. When you see it from a distance, it seems like a small multi-copter, but it's uh, anything but that.
these are significant weights, these are exceed 20 kilograms. Over here we uh, have a big transmission for the fire service uh, that includes the carrying four uh, hoses for extending the firefighting uh, network. And uh, what we have requested from us uh, was to be able to deliver those uh, to a distance to the people that are in the wildfires and uh, help them uh, extend their uh, firefighting network. Over here, you get an idea of the weight of the multicopter, seeing the distance from it, it creates a, an effect down the ground. Over here, it's going to drop. Some nice views here to see how stable it is in the uh, public right. And now a smooth landing. Some photos with the packaging in the country and the protective cover. And here you can sit with some people around so you can uh, have a perspective about the public. Moving forward, I will show you some uh, slides with uh, different variants, so you can have a very closer look. This is the one with the RPG 26, this is the RPG 18, this is the rocket launchers, and this is the hand grenade bomber. Over here, you will see uh, some uh, test slides that we have done with the prototype to check the agility and the performance, and they are actually Shown very well how how agile how fast this grow is.
Next, uh, I have some videos with the test that we were doing uh, developing the carrying capability for the fire department. Over here, we even carry water, the essence of carry water to be able to put out the small fires and we control also the flow. Here you see some uh, videos uh, from our thermal cameras, and uh, you can see how 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 we can. And this is actually a video that was taken at three o'clock at night. Uh, our, our the video camera we use, the thermal camera has uh, a lot of different palettes, and it's a very useful tool uh, for surveillance or uh, any other which of the the, the US might do on, uh, at night, but also in the day. Uh, I, I don't want to neglect to give you a video also from uh, our smaller helicopter Empusa. And this is a nice view from uh, the snow covered uh, Athens. Uh, Panopolis, the air drone system I talked about, that we are uh, developing in cooperation with uh, CERN. And this is essentially a, a software engine that uh, can take the information from many different uh, sensors and fuse them together in order to increase the probability of detection of drones. And uh, especially the most challenging ones are the, the smaller drones because they have much uh, smaller, uh, let's say, signature uh, for, for the system. Here are some uh, screenshots from uh, from the software, uh, showing uh, the, the following of different paths from uh, incoming drones, and of course uh, some uh, sensors that we use for that system, and uh, some applications like uh, the application of the system on my my bank vessels. I, I will just give you a quick uh, overview of some other products. As we said, the hex Characteristics I want to get my style with those. Uh, here you see a blow up view. Uh, you can uh, uh, see the complexity of, uh, of the systems, and it's not even showing all of them. Uh, here is the, the quad copter that you saw yesterday. Fine. Here's a tactical version of the case copter. Here is another interesting product that we have made, which is another water controller that is uh, for the special forces in order for them to be able to control uh, some functions of the drone while being some pairs underwater and without going out on the surface to get, uh, and get uh, noticed by, uh, by the enemy. Uh, this is something that they found very, very useful and they are keen to use it. Here is the tethered version, again, the same hexapod that we showed yesterday, but this time with the power line uh, able to, to supply virtually endless power to the drone without anything. Uh, it can stay up as long as its motors uh, stay intact. This is our ground station. Here, this is an opportunity. This is something that's happening worldwide, and the country, big countries like the United States are banning foreign drones because of the, the, the fear of the cybersecurity issue. And uh, we have, because of these reasons, we have decided to go and uh, design our drones with open source software and uh, give the drones and give access to the whole code of the drones to, to the customer in order to overcome exactly this, uh, these problems that are major for major drone manufacturers. And of course, this is now an opportunity for us. To go back to the roadmap of success, as I was saying in the beginning, in order to succeed to your professional life, first you have to dare to make the first step. Remember that. You have to follow your dreams with passion, and you don't have to be afraid to make mistakes as they are your wealth in time in life. Of course, as long as you don't, you learn from them and you don't repeat. Uh, talking about success stories, uh, we couldn't be successful as a company if we were not in a successful group. And uh, this is the spirit of group, and you can see the exponential growth of, uh, of uh, 
of this group for, from 2004 to today and how it is adding year by year more and more companies and more and more uh, successful companies in, 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 in its, uh, its path. And it's not stopping, it has more to come. Uh, now, the, back to the SaaS technology, the SaaS technology story. Uh, I want to, to tell you that uh, our goal when we created the SaaS technology seemed almost impossible. Now, we are in a position to offer international competitive products made by big hands. And we are happy to be able to put a small barrier to the menace of the brain drain that is uh, happening to our country. And we even have the ambition to reverse the strength uh, to, to the extent of our abilities and turn it to a great game as much as we can. Uh, so, if you are a young scientist and in the profession on the battleground, as we said, so before you decide how to pursue with your dreams and goals in your professional life, remember that next door to you there is a technological company that looks for talents like you and can put them in good use. Uh, it can put to good use your passion and your knowledge. Now, before, before I end uh, this presentation, I want to share you a secret recipe for success of our company as we see it, and hopefully it will be the same for you. Now I'm speaking here, some anticipation, I hope. And there it is. Of course, I'm joking saying that this is the top secret uh, uh, information. It is a, a chaotic diagram here, as you see. But uh, you only have to keep in mind three things from that. The one is that, uh, let's say, two or three individuals from different uh, straight lines, as I was describing at the beginning, start to interact with the system in a very complex way. Uh, to find themselves uh, together in one triad at the end to form a company and start working from then on as a common entity. Uh, this, uh, believe it or not, is going to be your world here. If you are individuals that are going into this battle, you will interact like a ping pong ball around. And, uh, and hopefully, soon enough, you will find your, your way to life and your way to your career. Uh, thank you very much all for, for your uh, patience and I know it was a difficult time and I'm open for questions. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, very nice uh, presentation, uh, Mr. Cabiotis. Um, uh, I would say that I find the product portfolio quite impressive for a company that formerly exists only for two years, but as we also learned there was a a pretty long incubation period of like five or six years before that. So that's that's another thing consistent with what we heard this morning. Um, I want to ask if there's uh, any questions in the room uh, at this point, or if we have any other questions online. No, so uh, one question that I have is uh, um, regarding the beginning of the company, because that's something we debated a bit earlier today. Uh, so, did you did you have a pretty clear idea of what is uh, um, uh, the niche uh, application that you were interested in, or the addressable market, or was it one of those uh, uh, build it and they will come, like uh, we heard earlier today? So, did you have a, a clear idea of which uh, market segment you wanted to uh, to address? Uh, thank you for the question. I, I think yes. yes. We have a very clear mind. We have seen early enough the potential of the Amman systems, and uh, uh, the only deviation we have in the beginning, as I showed, uh, when uh, we started to set the class right now. And uh, what we saw in the process was that we have great competition in the aircraft, like the money that we had designed at the beginning. So we decided to, to, to change the car, our route and go to the to the smaller degrees that are better in the market and they give us a better opportunity to penetrate uh, this market. And of course, because the market is established with uh, big companies uh, from abroad that are making ready made products, we chose the path of the customization and the answer to the specific needs of the customer. So this was our business model, and yes, we did know where we want to go, and uh, it, it was not something that came about as we had we were going. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you very much. If we have no other questions, I want to thank you again.
and of course we'll stay in touch and thanks uh, once more for your work in uh, uh, with us in the project i wanted to add something i forgot to say yesterday uh, our collaboration has not been only in the prototyping of the drone you saw yesterday but it's been also in uh, getting data from them which have been very useful because they run several um, trial flights and uh, we asked them uh, Nitin and Mohammed asked them to get some data from those trial flights, which helped us uh, fine-tune the models that we have for that we had for the um, energy consumption uh, under realistic uh, flight conditions. So uh, this has been quite helpful, and um, as I said again, we look forward to continuing the collaboration.